Hello there and welcome. In the previous episode we added the option to pick up weapons and to also switch between the weapons that we have. Today we're going to continue working on our FPS game and the first thing we want to do is take care of a problem that usually happens when we're creating an FPS game and the problem is that usually the items that we're holding are clipping through other objects. So what I mean is that if we pick up a weapon and it will be in our hand, then if I approach a wall, it will simply clip through this wall. And if I go over here, it will clip through the table. Now, of course, we can add box colliders on these things, but the box colliders will not allow us to go too near. So sometimes it will help, for example, on a wall, we won't be able to approach the wall, but a long weapon will still clip through the wall. So there is a fix to this and we're going to take care of that right now. So the way we're going to fix it is by simply creating an extra camera that will only render the weapon. But our main camera will render everything except the weapon. And this way it doesn't matter if we clip through other objects, we're still going to see our weapon. So inside our player, inside the main camera, we're going to create another camera and we're going to name it weapon render camera. Then we're going to create a new layer and we're going to name it weapon render. Now we need to set everything we want to render on the second camera to be on this layer. So the weapon spawn will go on the weapon render and also the children. Then we go into our prefabs, we select the pistol and we move it to the weapon render layer and we also change the children and we do the same thing for the M16. So all of these things are going to be rendered on the second camera. Now we're going to click on the main camera and inside the rendering, inside the calling mask, we are going to remove weapon render. On the weapon render camera, we are going to select nothing except the weapon render layer. So this is the only layer that it's going to render. We're going to change the near clipping to about 0.1 and then inside the environment, we're going to change the background type to be uninitialized. We can also open the output and we can change these ones to be off. And we can also delete the audio listener because we already have one on the main camera. So now if we run the game and we pick up the weapon, and we go near a wall, it will not clip through the wall. The player will clip because we still did not add any kind of box collider, but the weapon is not going to clip. And also if we go over here to the table, the weapon is not going to clip because it will always be rendered on this second camera. So this is how it's done. Next, we're going to create some basic UI for our game. We do have these bullet counters that we added a few episodes ago, but of course it doesn't look good and we need more information over here. So at the moment we have both of these canvases. One contains this middle point and the other contain this text. I don't remember why we separated them. They can be on the same canvas, but for now let's just leave this middle point on a separate canvas and we're going to focus on this canvas. So we can delete this text because we're going to create a new UI. And now if we click on this UI and we go to our scene view, we can see the canvas over here. At this point, we want to add some kind of UI that is going to represent different information about our weapons. For example, the bullets, but also what weapon are we holding? Maybe our lethals and tacticals, if we're going to add grenades later on. So it really depends on your game and on the style of your game and what you want to have over there. I'm going to show you a simple example with simple elements, but of course you can change it, you can add things, you can remove things. And in order for you not to spend time right now on creating this UI, I'm going to supply you a UI asset that I created. So you can find a link in the description. And when you download this file, you're going to get a zip file, just extract it. And then you're going to find a Unity package. And if you don't know how to import Unity packages, simply go to assets, import package, custom package, 
and then you need to select this package that you downloaded. Then it's going to ask you to import a few different files, select import, and you're going to see it inside your assets folder. Then when you see it inside the assets folder, simply take it and drag it into the canvas. Then you're going to see it appear over here in the corner. If for some reason it didn't appear in the corner, you can just position it over here, make sure it's in the actual corner, and then we can anchor it. So press on Alt and anchor it over here. Another thing we're going to be using is this FPS icons pack. It's an asset pack that is free that you can find on the Unity Asset Store, and it basically contains a small amount of different icons in different colors, and it's something that can help you follow this tutorial, but of course, you can have your own icons in your game. So when you import it into your project, you're going to find it over here, FPS icons pack. The last thing that we need for this episode is to import some kind of transparent sprite. So again, if you don't know how to create a transparent sprite, I provided a link in the description. So simply download it and import it into your project. So I have it over here. And when you import it into the project, just make sure that you change it to be a sprite and over here select it to be alpha is transparent. Now, if you remember, we created this ammo manager and this was a simple singleton that changed this text UI that we had and we actually don't want to keep calling it ammo manager because we want to do more than just controlling the ammo. We want to change the different sprites over here. We want to change the amounts and the bullets. So we're going to change this name. So let's rename it to be HUD manager. So with this manager, we're going to control the UI and change all of this information. Now we can also see this ammo manager script, so we can rename all of this, but I think it's just a waste of time. Let's just remove this component and create a new script and name it HUD manager. And let's also delete the ammo manager because we don't need it anymore. So the HUD manager should also be a singleton. So we're going to copy this part over here, like we usually do with singletons and this part over here. And now we want to add a bunch of references to all of the components that we have over here. So we need references for this text and for this text and for these images. So if you open the weapon panel, you can see that we have the magazine ammo, the total ammo, the ammo type, the active weapon, the unactive weapon, the lethal, the tactical. So all of these are image components and we have some text components and we want references for all of them inside the HUD manager. So let's add it over here. So we have references to all of these components, the magazine amount, total amount, the ammo type, the weapons and the throwables. So when we save and we come back over here, we get this error because we deleted the ammo manager, but the weapon script was using it. So we go back into the weapon script and we have this part over here. So we're going to delete it. Now we're going to select our HUD manager and we need to drag all of these references. So magazine ammo, total ammo. Now inside the HUD manager, we're going to start connecting all of these components. So we're going to create an update method. So inside the update method, we are going to get a reference to the active weapon. For this, we go into the weapon manager and 
we get the active weapon slot and then we find the weapon inside the active weapon slot. Then for the unactive weapon, we create a method that is going to get us the unactive weapon slot and from this we can get the weapon. So we're going to get the unactive weapon. Now if we have a weapon inside the active slot, because remember when we start the game we don't have any weapon inside the active weapon slot, so we want to make sure that there is an active weapon. If we have an active weapon, we're going to start setting all of these things. So we set the text of the magazine ammo UI, and we do the same thing that we did before. We simply divide the bullets left with the bullets per burst. Of course, we need to go into the active weapon. At the moment, we're simply going to display the size of the magazine like we did before, but we're going to change this later. So for example, if we have 200 bullets, then it's going to display this entire amount. And some games do it this way. If you just want to show the size of your magazine, you can do it like this. It really depends on you. Next, we want to set the sprites of the weapon type, of the active weapon, and the unactive weapon. But to do this, we need to get the model of this weapon. So we go into the active weapon and we get its model and we save it over here. And then we create these methods that are going to get us the ammo sprite and we pass in the model and then the weapon sprite and we pass in the model. And also if we do have an unactive weapon and simply means that if we have a weapon inside the second slot, then this will be true. And then we also get the weapon sprite, but this time we pass in the unactive weapon and we get its model. So we pass in the model into this method. Now, if we don't have an active weapon, then we're simply going to set the text to be empty because we don't have any weapon yet. Now we need to create all of these methods. So let's start with the get on active weapon slot. We're going to return a game object. So over here, we simply loop over all of our slots, and at the moment, we only have two slots. So if this weapon slot is not the active weapon slot, it means that it's the unactive weapon slot. So it's very simple. And then we return it, and we return it out of this method. And also because this method returns something, we have to make sure that it will return something even if this won't happen, but it can never happen because we will always have one active slot and one unactive slot. Next, we're going to deal with both of these methods. So over here, we simply create a switch and we pass in the model. So we're simply going to check if it's a pistol, then we're going to instantiate the pistol weapon sprite. And if it's an M16, we're going to instantiate the M16 weapon. And we're going to instantiate it from the resource folder. So we're going to create this folder and inside we're going to have a game object that is going to have this sprite that we want. And then we're going to do the same for the ammo. So if it's a pistol, we're going to instantiate the pistol sprite. So it doesn't need to be the pistol and doesn't need to be the M16. It should be rifle and pistol because we're going to use this ammo for all the different rifles and we're going to use the same ammo for all the different pistols. So we don't have to specify the exact model. And these are just sprites that we're going to find inside the resource folder. Then we're going to create the resource folder. So resources, just make sure that you spell it correctly. And then we're going to open our FPS icons pack and inside you can choose the color that you want. I'm going to use the white one. So we are going to open this weapons and we're going to use the M16. So we're going to just drag it into the scene. And then we're also going to do the same thing for the handgun. Then we're going to open this thing and we're going to grab a bullet that seems to be of a pistol 
and an assault rifle bullet. Now we're going to open our resource folder and we're going to drag all of these into this folder. Then we're going to delete them from the scene and we're going to rename them. So we're simply going to instantiate these different sprites according to the model of the weapon. So when we hold the M16, we're going to display this icon and we're going to display this ammo. When we hold the pistol, we're going to display this thing and we're going to display this ammo. And we're going to display them inside these slots. So let's make sure that everything is correct with these slots, even though I created this. We need to go into our weapon panel and we can click on the ammo type and we want to make sure that everything is empty before we actually set something. So we want to delete all of these default values. So we can simply take our transparent sprite and drag it inside and then make sure that it's a simple image and the preserve aspect is ticked. Then we're going to do the same thing with the active weapon. We're going to drag the transparent and we're going to keep it at simple and preserve aspect and the same thing with the unactive weapon. Now notice that this unactive weapon has a gray color and that's something that I did inside this asset to actually make it gray all of the time because it's the unactive weapon. Now we need one more thing inside the HUD manager so over here let's add a public sprite empty slot so this will be our transparent sprite because we also want to set it in the code each time we change to a different slot and if we don't have anything inside we want to set it to be transparent so if we select the hud manager let's also drag this transparent into the empty slot and over here we're going to add a few more things so ammo type And we can also see these default values. So let's go into the tactical amount and set it to be zero. And the lethal amount, set it to be zero. So when we're going to add these things, we're going to set them as well. For now, we're not going to have tacticals or lethals. And we're also going to set the magazine size to be zero and the total amount to be zero. And I also want to make this total amount to be a bit grayer or just a bit more transparent. Now let's run the game and see that everything is working. So we can see at the bottom we still don't have any kind of sprite because we have nothing in our hand but if we pick up a pistol we can see the pistol sprite, we can see the seven bullets and we can also see the ammo type. Now we can also see that we have the unactive slot and the active slot. But right now you can notice that we can shoot and we have no limit to the bullets. So in the next episode we want to add some kind of limitation. We want to be able to pick up ammo from the floor and then it will add into the total amount of the ammo. So for example, we're going to be able to pick up rifle ammo and pistol ammo. So if we pick up pistol ammo, we're going to see it over here and then we can only shoot according to the amount of ammo that we have. So if we use all of these bullets, we won't be able to shoot again. So that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're still not subscribed and also leave a like, it will help me a lot and see you next time.